Decked bone affects the heart. This is research that was done by doctors Habis and Marangel with the help of volunteers in Colorado. The mainstream media is beginning to print articles on electrosensitivity. The man who is allergic to radio waves appeared in Popular Science in February 2010. The same month, the LA Times published four articles related to electromagnetic pollution, and one of them dealt with electrosensitivity syndrome. Symptoms of electrohypersensitivity that affect the heart include palpitations, arrhythmia, pain or pressure in the chest, low or high blood pressure. These symptoms are often accompanied by shortness of breath and feelings of anxiety, no doubt with the fear that the person might be experiencing a heart attack. So we decided to investigate this complaint. The question we asked was, do deck phones affect the heart? Our exposure was at 2.4 gigahertz. The intensity was at 3 microwatts per centimeter squared. This is at 0.3% of the Federal Communication Commission guideline in the United States and Health Canada's Safety Code 6 guideline. Our exposure was for a three minute interval. To monitor heart rate variability, we placed a wired monitor on the subject being tested and asked the person to lie down. We placed the decked phone base station about two feet from the subject's head. When we plugged the phone into a live outlet, it radiated right away, and when we plugged it into a dead outlet, it stopped radiating. This was our sham exposure. The computer recorded each heartbeat with a line that represents the time between beats. The taller the line, the slower the heart rate, the shorter the line, the faster the heart rate. We tested 25 subjects in Colorado, mostly females between the ages of 37 to 79. During a pre-exposure questionnaire, 14 complained of slight to extreme sensitivity when exposed to electromagnetic radiation, 5 said they experienced a rapid heart rate, and 3 experienced an irregular heart rate. This was a double-blind study. Neither the person being tested nor the doctor assessing the results knew when the deck phone was radiating. We sent the results to Dr. Jeff Marangel, who routinely measures heart rate variability in his clinic. He was provided with some basic information about each person, as shown in this slide. We did continuous monitoring of the heart for several three-minute intervals. Here we have the results for subject A. This person's heart rate is shown in red. Indeed, this is what Dr. Marangel would look at to determine if this person responded to any provocation. Can you tell when subject A was exposed to the radiation from the deck phone? Interval 1 is the pre-exposure, interval 2 the deck phone, and interval 3 the sham exposure. Subject A is not responding to the radiation. Here are the results for subject B. Can you guess when this person was exposed to the decked phone and to the sham exposure? This person heart, person's heart rate jumps from 68 beats per minute to 122 beats per minute as soon as the decked phone is radiating. It then returns to normal during the second sham exposure and increases again during the second decked phone exposure. Subject B is highly responsive and is experiencing tachycardia, a rapid heart rate as soon as the phone is plugged in and radiating. Here we have subject C. During the intervals 3 and 5, this person has an elevated heart rate that coincides with radiation from the decked phone compared to the sham exposure. The Nerve Express program also shows the functioning of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system during each exposure interval. The sympathetic nervous system, which is the gas pedal on the car, is upregulating, while the parasympathetic nervous system, your car brakes, is downregulating. This is the fight or flight response that we all experience if we feel threatened, either physically or emotionally. Subject C believes she is moderately sensitive, and we diagnosed her as being very sensitive. Subject D has a delayed response. This person is exposed at intervals 3, where you can see some irregularity in her heart rate, at interval 7, 8, and 9. 
The more often subject D is exposed, the greater her response, both in terms of heart rate and her sympathetic and parasympathetic response. Subject D does not know if she is sensitive, and we classified her as being moderately to very sensitive because of her delayed response. Of the 25 subjects we tested in Colorado, not everyone who claims to be electrically hypersensitive responded to the DECT phone challenge. Eight experienced some changes in heart rate variability that is directly attributable to the microwave radiation from the DECT phone. Four subjects experienced a rapid heart rate. Do DECT phones affect the heart? The answer is yes. We have unequivocal evidence that Effects are observed at non-thermal levels well below federal communication guidelines. And the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz is the same frequency used by wireless routers and microwave ovens. This is the first study that documents immediate and dramatic results in both heart rate and heart rate variability caused by an approved device that generates microwaves at levels well below federal guidelines in both Canada and the United States. This research has been accepted for publication in a peer-reviewed journal and will be available during the summer of 2010. If you are experiencing heart problems, visit your doctor. It could be a heart attack or it could be electrohypersensitivity. In either case, share this video with loved ones and with your health care team. We thank the following people for helping with this research.